Alrighty, we've got a three-on-three -three challenge here. It's myself, Max Smith, and Tom Martell battling against Jesse Slacks. We got Nate the Max Slayer here and uh, Luis Salvato. And I've opened a Soul Ring. This is really interesting. Let's see how this pack's going to play out. I'm going to take Soul Ring. Slacks is going to take Raghavan. And Mac is going to take Solitude. And then Nate takes Fiery Confluence. And then Martell takes like Life Death or something. And then Salvato probably takes Currency Converter and I get back maybe a Cryptic Coat. Alternately, Slacks could take Solitude and then pass the two red cards, but that's pretty good for my team. So I'm going to put Slacks on being red here and Mac on playing white, but we'll see. Yeah, this is a much weaker pack. <laughs> uh, I was going to try to cut a red card, but there aren't any here. There's like a stomping ground. Best cards in the pack are like Spell Seeker if you get something good to get with it. <laughs> An Elspeth, but I'm not taking that. Nissa, Krasis. Hmm. Pretty. This is definitely not what I wanted to take after first picking uh, Soul Ring, but let's see. As long as I pass Elspeth and touch the Spirit Realm, I don't mind. I guess I could take Nissa. Nissa's pretty good with Soul Ring. I don't mind drafting green. Though drafting green behind Salvato is like a little bit less enticing. I don't think taking Spellseeker here really is great, but you know what? I'll try taking Spellseeker. It's got it's got decent outs. Then there's a Mox. So Tom must have passed a double Mox pack. And I'm passing a Parallax Wave, which I guess I don't mind. Okay. Well, now I'm definitely on to a pretty good ramp start. Passing Reprieve, Mother Runes, Parallax Wave, Ketria Trium, Breeding Pool. All right, all right. And, I mean, the Nissa would have been good, but I actually don't mind uh, Spellseeker here either. I and mean, probably just take Bloodstained Mire. Like, I could easily be uh, Artifacts deck. I could just be a <laughs> green ramp deck. I'm just going to take the Red Fetch, pass Jesse's choice of Steam Vents or Badlands. People get a bunch of lands here. And then there's... Sylvan Keratin and Bitter Triumph. And I also could have just taken Thassa's Oracle out of that other pack, but I didn't. that didn't seem great either. Oh, Chain Lightning. I like that with Spellseeker, and it's the best card, and I get to cut a red card from Jesse, who could still take like a Stormseeker Robber of the Rich, but they're so much worse. Don't mind passing Imperial Seal. There is a world where Slacks takes Life Death second, but it's not very likely. Ragavan is just so good. There's Revoker, so... Imperial Seal's probably going to be gone. Probably Stormseeker. Probably Soul Guide Lantern. I'll get some artifact back there if I really want it. I mean, I could also just be Red Green Beats or something here. I don't even know. I've got quite the quite the start here. Now there's a Mishra's Research Desk, a K Command. Raugrin Triome is kind of nice with a Bloodstained Mire and Spellseeker. Maybe I'll just do that. I'll let Jesse have a K Command, and then I'll wheel... Maybe an infiltrator or research desk. I don't mind arc. I don't think I need arc trail here. Yeah, I actually like Raugrin Trium in this spot. And then pass one, two, three. So there's arc trail, infiltrator, desk, queller, dress down, K command, plus mana confluence. So I'm clearly going to get something back out of this pack. And this sets me up to take spell queller or dress down if it comes back or research desk. K command probably not coming back, so I don't really care about that. Or infiltrator. Like all those cards seem like they could be good. I also have a good setup for Domain here. All right, so Cryptic Code and Life Death came back. I, I do like the Cryptic Code still. It's good with all this acceleration too. Don't mind passing the Life Death. There's also a Malevolent Hermit, a Hedge Maze, a Bonehorde Dracosaur, but I'm a pretty big Cryptic Coat fan. And we'll see what's next. Cast Into the Fire versus Generous Scent. There's also a Krasis and a Briar Bridge Tracker. I could just hate cast into the fire. Well, I'd say hate, but also I would put the card in my deck. And one of these green three drops might come back, and I don't care about passing a touch the spirit realm or these other green cards. All right, that actually seems pretty reasonable to me. And then next, I mean, it's another card for Spellseeker to get to, which is not crazy. And what are we looking for out of the next couple packs? I guess we'll see. Silvato's about to pass us one. These, these have been some juiced packs. I mean, opening on Soul Ring Mox is pretty nice. Oh, Sensei's Top is awesome with all this start. There's also Leovold, but I don't really want to take that. There's also Ketria Triome or Breeding Pool. 
Hmm. I think fetch land plus spell seeker as shuffles makes me really want top. It's also good with soul ring and mox. And it's actually kind of good with cryptic coat. You get to you get to decide what to exile passing. So the two good lands, Leovold, Unmarked Grave. Okay, now there's a bad lands. I guess I'll just take the bad lands here. I think that's better than proving ground, because I already have one tap land. You don't want that many tap lands. And oh, Soul Guide came back. Yeah, I'll take a Soul Guide. I think I'll take that over Revoker. I just really like having access to against that against Reanimator. And then this looks like a nice Misha's Research desk deck. Just it's another card that's good if you're if you draw any of your accelerants. And then I don't care about Crucible, but I would definitely play Malevolent Hermit. And hmm, this Curse Scroll versus Unruly Crasis. Let's just take the Crasis. I think Curse Scroll, I'm probably going to cut it from the cube soon. Crasis is kind of a beating, and this deck could morph into something that, that could utilize that. Well, a pretty open pack one. I have a bunch of artifacts. I have three red lands, and I've got like three blue cards. So I'm like blue red, but I've also got a bad lands for black plus that Mire. Last pick, Misty. All right. Can I open just a little power? <laughs> Ooh, the One Ring. That's nice. Yeah, One Ring's great with Soul Ring. All right. Take the One Ring. Pass. Salvato a Time Spiral. He's always into that sort of thing. And a Sahili. So Itali, Time Spiral, Sahili, Sentinel probably go. And then maybe Embereth Shieldbreaker, Sunfall, or one of the white green cards. All right. Well, I mean, it's a pretty easy ring for me. Oh, Persist. Persist probably goes. So, I mean, it's possible Sahili comes back, though I don't think that's, like, super likely. And I feel pretty good about this start. I mean, kind of hard not to, right? Let's see. A bunch of ones, twos, and four. All right, Lutri versus Mana Leak. I mean, this is a kind of nice Lutri deck, but I think I'd still take Mana Leak. Mana Leak is so good. Just having a way to just unconditionally stop their spell, and this deck's got a lot of gas in it. All right, I'll take, I'll pass a Lutri to Salvato and a Snuff Out, and Lutri Snuff Out, Zagoth Triumph, Blood Crypt, I'll probably go, and then maybe one of the lands or a Sail into the West or maybe a Battle Wall. I don't know, but I'll, I'll just take the Mana Leak. This pack has a Retrofitter, which looks really nice in this deck. Also, it means if I if I ever see an Academy, I just get to to win the game. You know, not that I'm going to get past Academy. I 9 0 yesterday with Academy in my deck. And, uh, well, two of the three decks. So I don't think I'm going to get past one of those very often. But I will take Retrofitter here over Sheldock. Past like a Deluge, Goriel's Vengeance, Portal, Tidebinders is a relevant one. All right. And followed up with. Um, this This pack doesn't have anything I really want. I could take Ignoble because it's the best card. I don't think I want to take Dreadhorde. I just have a Chain Lightning. I mean, I could definitely play Ignoble in this deck. And I don't mind passing Ignoble. Not seeing a lot of white, which I don't think Slax went into white. But maybe he did. Maybe he tried to cut Mac. But passing a bunch of mediocre green cards. There's also a Name Sticker Goblin, but I don't think I want to take that. I think I'll just take the Ignoble. Maybe, maybe we'll end up there. Okay, that's a late Battle Rager. I could take Teferi. I have a Raugrin Triumph. I could take Displacer Kitten. It's pretty good. Oh, it's pretty good with Cryptic Coat. It's pretty good with Spellseeker. It's okay with One Ring. You don't get protection again, but it does let you reset it. And I just have a lot of the cheap cards that are good with it. Alternatively, I don't think I want to take Witness. I could take a Sword of the Meek for spec purposes. I don't think I want to take Battle Rager or Dark Confidant or Sculler. I'll just let those pass by. I don't, I don't know about Teferi. Teferi is good, but I have a lot of stuff to spend mana on. I actually think I'm just going to take Sword. No, I'll take the Kitten. I don't know. That's close. Kitten versus Teferi. This just does seem like a pretty good Kitten deck. I, I still have the Badlands. I guess I could have taken Vicious Battle Rager, maybe. Maybe I should have just done that. I don't know. And this pack has Gaia's Cradle and Fire Covenant. Is Salvato playing Black Red? I kind of don't think so. I think I'm going to take Cradle to go with Retrofitter or like just my small green things. I don't mind passing a Stern Scolding. My mana seems pretty good. 
Oh, then there's Sahili. This looks like a great Sahili deck. Wow, I'm really glad I took the Cradle. Okay, and the Kitten's actually feeling pretty good here, too. Take Sahili, pass a bunch of nonsense. This pack has Zagoth Triome, which I can fetch with Mire. I could take Blood Crypt, but that doesn't do much for me. Bayou, I think, does... Oh, Bayou makes Mire get untapped green. That actually, I think, is more important with Ignoble in deck. So I think I take the Bayou here. And then there's a Botanical Sanctum as well. But this is kind of like taking... Uh, Green, it's kind of like taking a green, an extra green source out of this. I don't know. Botanical Sanctum versus Bayou there is pretty close. I don't even know which one's more likely to wheel. This pack's all solid cards, too. All right, so this Bloodstained Mire. Here, I'm going to move these things over a little. I don't think I want Cast Into the Fire in the main deck, but I'm glad I took it. Um, Bloodstained Mire can get all the black green lands, but it can also get blue. I also now have three, a bunch of sources of black for free if that comes up. Oh, this actually looks like a tough cookie deck, especially with Cradle and everything. I'll pass a Deluge, I'll pass a Portal, I'll pass a Bazaar. That's all fine. Titania versus Uro. Oh, this could be a Tireless Tracker deck. Yeah, make a bunch of clues. All right, let's get an Urza Academy. This would be such a sick Academy deck. Bob and Sculler and Elish Norn and Smashing. I guess I'll just take Sword because we haven't seen Thopter Foundry yet. And then here I'll take Rex Sage and sideboard it maybe. Okay, so looking for looking for Academy more than I think any other card that isn't like literal power. The spell seeker hasn't really worked out. I was just trying to manifest a time walk in pack three. <laughs> and I think the kitten looks pretty good. I guess I'll take Firestorm over the two black cards here. I don't know. Maybe there's matchups I want it. I don't really care about either of those things. I guess Urborg makes Guy's Cradle less of a gamble, but I still am not really that excited about it. And then we get one more pack here. Oh, Botanical Sanctum came back. Excellent. I will take that over Mirror Battlesphere. I think that's pretty easy. And then Oath of Druids that no one appears to want. Okay. Pack three time. Oh, there's Urza. Okay. It's no Academy, but it's actually not much worse if even really... I mean, I'm not complaining about an Urza because now my Sahili and my Tough Cookie and my Cradle and my Kitten all get to go off. Passing Tamiya, True Name, Subtlety, Flooded Strand, Grist, Underground Sea. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff. I'll get something back here. Slamming an Urza. And the one time Salvato just decides, you know what? I could I could pass him a Tolarian Academy. I don't I don't need to hate this Tolarian Academy. <laughs> Let's see. All right, the spell seeker is currently not in, and I think I will. I will be happy to play this chain lightning on the splash. All right. Oh man, there's grief, exhum, and archon here. I don't like passing the archon, but there's three different reanimator cards here. I think I'm just gonna take the preordain. Kind of a bad pack for us, I will say. <laughs> it's Ruby, what is going on? All right, it looks like Mac, or sorry, Martel also opened a double power pack and just passed both or something. I'll take Mox Ruby then. Pass, Pest Infestation, I don't like passing, but uh, passing Teferi, Pest Infestation, Lelia, Spell Pierce. Oh, so I'll get a blue green land back or Mishra's Bobble or something. All right, I guess I'll take the Mox. Yeah, there's no way I'm getting past Academy. That There's no universe where that happens. Not that I really need it. This deck is just... <laughs> this is a three on three. And I have three pieces of power. I mean, I opened one of them, but still. All right. Well, I got to take Thieving Skydiver. It's the nuts against me. And Trop would be nice, but if it doesn't come back, it doesn't come back. That's fine. Also, everyone else apparently has Moxes, so easy Skydiver here. And, oh... I could just Bolt here. Bolt's an awesome card. I don't really want to pass it. I don't need a Lotus Petal here. I think I will just Bolt. And, uh, yeah, I've got some Acceleration. i got a bunch of Bolts. I've got a Soul Guide Lantern that's going to be good. I mean, I still get to play a few more cards here. I might play Rex Age or Cast Into the Fire. I don't know. Mm. One more pick for Thopter Foundry. That would be a, a kind of sick and late gift to use these this black mana for. Ooh, let's go Thopter Foundry. That I could get that six pick. It's pretty hard because someone on the at the table is gonna want to hate it because they don't know where the Sword of the Meek went. But you never know. You know, 
like Salvato might see this Thopter and be like, you know, I passed the sword the other direction, so what are the odds? <laughs> Let's see. Though I guess you can then do the math and be, realize, oh, I'm the only one who hasn't seen this pack yet and no one else took the Thopter, but... So, yeah, let's just say it's unlikely, even if it were to be in that pack. I don't think I'll get Spire Bluff back out of this pack or Lotus Petal. But maybe I'd get... No, Renin Six isn't even good. Whatever. Okay, here... Nah, not an exciting pack. I don't really even need the Seed of the Synod for any particular reason. Like, it's okay with Urza because it makes the Golem one bigger, the Construct. And I guess it makes my... Uh, tough cookie get a target, but I think I'd rather just take a bone crusher here. This Badlands and this Bayou do, or the Bayou does something for me. The Badlands really doesn't. Okay. See, so, you know, we're going to wait on some wheels now, but we've got a deck. I mean, this is 17 lands plus the three artifacts, so I need a couple more spells. But first of all, I could play Spellseeker as a way to get bolts. Okay, Tamio came back. So did True Name. So did Subtlety. It's also Grist. Oh, you know what? This actually, this deck could actually play Grist, and I think Grist is really good. I think it's better than Subtlety, because this deck's really fast and has some good answers to creatures. So I think I'd rather just play Grist and just try to land one of those. Grist is especially good with Guy's Cradle, too. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to get three of these cards back. Like, I'll probably get something back I can use. Bone Shards, Exhuming Grief, all tabled. Don't like that. Ugh, okay. I mean, I guess I take the Grief is probably the best card. I don't really want to play any of these cards. I could also just take Gilded Goose. Gilded Goose would be good in this deck. Let's just do that. I don't really know which one of those I want to hate. Oh, I definitely want Spell Pierce here. I like the land and all that, but I want, I want to be able to beat combo decks to some degree. Okay. Now we're at 14 land plus the three artifacts, but I'll probably want to play like one more land. So I probably want to cut like a card here. Um, don't care much about pyrokinesis. I mean, I could take it. I could also take this outland liberator. Though I have, no, I'll just hate the pyrokinesis. I have a bunch of anti-artifact cards. Oh, Spire Bluff came back. Sure, I'll pass Vendillion click for that. And then Brawler came back. You know, Brawler could just be a 5-3 in this deck. I have Bayou, Raugren Triumph, that's the combo, and I have a Fetch. And I could play this Badlands. Or I could just play a Seed of the Synod. I'd probably rather just play Seed of the Synod, I think. Okay, Tamio, Exploration, and True Name came back. Uh, I mean, this looks like an actual good True Name deck. Do I have Tamio Displacer Kitten? Eh, let's just take Tamio. I, I feel like... All right, I'll hit the Bone Shards, I guess. Oh, and a Mind Stone last? What a wild draft. All right, let's go to deck building and try to figure out what happened here. All right, what a deck. Uh, ended up playing 15 land plus the three artifacts. I feel like I've got so many mana sinks with a Tamio, One Ring, Urza, Kitten can be a lot of action, Tireless Tracker, Cryptic Code, all that. Bone Crusher was my last cut, and... Uh, Definitely maining the Soul Guide. So <laughs> Slax is like mono white. He apparently took Solitude into Parallax Wave. So I don't mind passing the Reanimator stuff through him, but then it got through Mac also. But this was a wild draft. So Martel opened two power twice, shipped them both, but also Salvato passing the other direction opened two power. So Tom has Mana Crypt Ancestral, and <laughs> Salvato has three pieces of power, and I have three pieces of power. So it's going to be a wild one. And uh, this is what I've got. Let's take a look at Tom and Max decks. Mac is on a pretty fair, like, red-green splash deck with Minsk and Boo, Caves of Chaos Adventure, an Elvish Spirit Guide that's pulling a lot of weight, Exploration, Territorial, Kavu, and Brawler. I'm glad I floated those. Uh, got the Ragavan, Firebolt, Arc Trail, Tribal Flames, Name Sticker Goblin's nice here, Bonehorn Dracosaur, and got the Pest Infestation, which is very nice for me. Tom is Mana Crypt Ancestral as promised, a bunch of Elves, Skull Clamp, and a bunch of big drops. This is a really good Mana Crypt deck with like Undermount Adventure, Ovenwald Oddity, Feywild Caretaker, all this stuff. So this is going to be a, a, a nice battle. we got a lot of power floating around. Let's see how that goes. All right. Time for round one. Let's go power. <laughs> yeah, that's some power. All right. What do we do in turn one here? I guess I can't play turn one crisis. So let's just go turn one preordain. See what we hit. And 
kind of go from there. Let's rack up some spells, shall we? Mm. So Vado has Mox Sapphire, Mox Jet, and another piece of power. We don't know what it is. It has to be either Time Walk or Lotus because he passed Ancestral for it. But we'll see. All right, Bolt and Ignoble. Um, I'm going to put Bolt on the bottom. I'll put Ignoble on the bottom. I can do better, I think. Well, maybe not. <laughs> Mox and Soul Ring. <clears throat> Pass the turn. I'm just trying to look for something like Urza, Retrofitter, anything like that. All right, I hope it's Duress, not Thoughtseize. No. And Breath Shield Breaker on my Soul Ring. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I prefer that wasn't the case, but I still get to play my Krasis on two here. I guess I'll play the island here. All right, let's draw. I, I preordained two to the bottom and then drew land land. So I did preordain two spells to the bottom, but they weren't particularly good spells. Killing the Soul Ring does stop me from uh, leveling up the Krasis here, which I, I don't like, but I'm just going to draw Urza. Oh, Flame Slash? No. Big, big Destiny? Okay. Unexpected, but all right. Um, and another land. Cool. Let's go... Cycle. If I draw one drop, I'll play it, you know? Okay, not land. That's that is basically all I ask. I could have cycled and left red up in case I drew the chain lightning, but this way I could also play a Gilded Goose. So, okay, Tough Cookie is not terrible. Would have been really good if I had just drawn that for my turn, but also Unruly Krasis is pretty good. If he doesn't have an answer for it, it's going to be a pretty fast clock. Next turn, next turn I can go Tough Cookie, Cradle, Attack with Emerald plus uh, Krasis here. He's ascending with the figure or not. Thing is, if he leaves, he can't make the figure large. I don't think it really matters. Like, he's not going to chump here. So I guess the reason not to attack would be that you could play Embereth Shieldbreaker and threaten a double block plus pump the figure. Yeah, that doesn't sound too legit, but we'll see. Okay, I guess I'll take one here, maybe two. Yeah, just one. And... Still got plenty of cards. Gemstone Mine. Lotus Petal. Okay. Guess we could have made figure a 4 4. <laughs> Into. What is this? I don't like this. Whatever this is, I'm not going to like it. Fractured Identity on the Krasis. Ugh. Okay. Draw. Cryptic Code is at least good. Mm hmm. Guess I'll just keep. Cradle is my top card here. Cryptic Coat. Oh, Displacer Kitten's kind of interesting. There's definitely... Oh, I needed that not to be Fracture Identity. That was a, such a big swing. There's definitely times when I could use Displacer Kitten here, flip it and use it. I don't know what I have to draw exactly. Why is Figure of Destiny in this deck? That's what I want to know. Um, I mean, drawing... Chain Lightning would be fine. The Krasis is pretty annoying. If I draw a cheap spell, I can like flip the Displacer Kitten and then Displacer the Cryptic Coat, which is kind of nice. If Nathan has a land, which he didn't, he could have played any land last turn because the petal provides white for identity. So Gemstone Mine was clearly his only untapped land. If he has a land, levels up Krasis, he can attack for 14. I go to five and then on my turn, uh, I would kill him, actually. I would go Cradle and <clears throat> be able to turn both of my uh, my food and my mocks into things. So I really hope he goes for it, because right now it looks like I can deal nine. But he doesn't know about the, the Cradle, and one land is not enough to, to flip it. So actually it wouldn't be bad if, I mean, it'd be really nice if he, he went for it here. Alternatively, he could attack me for eight down to 11 and then play something. And that could be a little tougher for me. All right, I guess he's going to attack for eight here. I could block, double block the Krasis and take four. 
I don't think that's the play I want to make. Because this doesn't give trample, so if I leave back one blocker for whatever he pumps, <clears throat> then that could still be fine for me. Okay. Nada. Um, let's see. I could make the mocks into something large. I could power up the mocks, attack for seven. He goes to six. Then if he powers up the crisis and attacks back, I can block and sack the food. So that actually seems fine. So let's go tough cookie on the mocks. If he has anything, I'm basically dead, but... And then attack with these two. Okay, he chumps, goes to 10. And then cradle, go. Oh, he had a play, a Samwise end of turn. Oh no. I don't really know what this deck is that I'm playing against, but he's he's getting me here. It's not going great. I am gonna be forced to block the figure. He's gonna blow up my tough cookie. I guess I just have to make the food token into a creature. I, this is gonna be really hard to win this game. <laughs> I could also gain three, go to 14, and if he has a land, I just die. So now let's make the food token into a creature. Is the, if there's anything involving Displacer Kitten, that would be kind of neat, but I don't think there is, given the, the cost it takes to flip it up. Yeah, it turns out not having the soul ring did add up, though mostly it was the fracture identity. Uh, so we're flipping or, or pumping Krasis here. Attacking and if I find an answer for crisis, I guess I could potentially live. I'm gonna two. Yeah, I can't really even though. Okay, grist. <laughs> that was an answer for crisis. Let's see if I flip cradle. Wow, we're actually like really close. Flip cat, blink, the, the cryptic coat, grist minus two, sack the cat, I'll have a blocker, no. All right, down a game here, unfortunate. All right, so sideboarding, I'm probably not gonna put too much in. Oh, except I will put in misdirection against fracture identity. It also could, could move the Embreath Shield Breaker, and I guess I'll take out Soul Guide for now. And then maybe I want Malevolent Hermit against that as well. Um, I'll keep in the Thieving Skydiver. I just kind of want blue cards for Misty as well. Spell Pierce seems fine. Do I, do I want Tamio? Tamio seems okay still. Um, I mean, Fracture Identity is just going to be good against me regardless. Don't think I want Rex Sage. Don't think I want Cast Into the Fire to Bone Crusher. He's got a bunch of weird... I don't really know what his deck's doing. He's got a bunch of weird little creatures. He's got Fiery Confluence in his deck, too. Something to keep in mind. Another reason that Malevolent Hermit, I think, is kind of nice. This makes me want to take out... Do I want to take out Chain Lightning? I mean, it kills a figure of Destiny. Don't even know how good that is. I could take out Tamio or Kitten. Hmm... I could take out the Skydiver. I mean, he has a he has a Talisman. All right, let's let's try taking out Skydiver. I think that's actually fine. Go to game two here. All right, I am on the play, and all right, I'll keep this hand. This is a turn two Crisis, turn one top, and have Spell Pierce up. So I like that, and. Into turn two, Krasis. Maybe turn three, Tamio. I don't even know if I'd be playing that or not. Let's see how this goes. All right, you mold the six, land, mox, top, go, spin top, end of turn. 
assuming I don't have to cast Spell Pierce if he plays Embereth Shieldbreaker, which does not look like he's going to. I guess I will get to spin the top, and that's fine. I'll save the Spell Pierce for a, like a Fracture Identity or something a little bit juicier. Ooh, top Tamio. That's a nice combination. I haven't really processed that till just now, but it means that, first of all, I could just flip the top and name top, but also I can just, uh, which is Bobble, sure, I'm not spell piercing that. I could also just use the top to know my top three and just name a card that's in the top three. Urza? I like Urza. Um, which one is he gonna flip? Or when's he gonna bobble? I think he's gonna bobble now. So I think I'll do it like this. Nope, he didn't bobble now. Well, he's gonna, he's gonna get to know that I have Urza. Oh, he is bobbling, so he sees an island. Okay, good. Forest. Play a Krasis. Oh, Krasis plus Construct? <laughs> if, uh, if you Krasis a Construct, it just becomes four four plus one for each artifact you control be like a seven seven on this board be pretty nice okay does he have like a mana drain or something i guess i'll attack first and and see um i mean i think i'm just going to play the urza here it just lets me keep up spell pierce if it resolves no oh, okay well, i don't even get to i don't even get to tamio it back Top cards by you. Okay, no plays there either. Land. Definitely not pumping the crisis. I'm just going to attack for four. I'm going to play Tamio. And I think I'm just going to plus Tamio and name something. Because I don't really want to spin the top here. Okay. Plus one. What do I want to name? Mm. Chill. I want to name probably the One Ring Displacer Kitten. I mean, Displacer Kitten seems like a pretty decent name. No, I'll name the One Ring. And I milled a bunch of stuff that I wasn't going to name. All right. So I did cost myself pretty big there by not tapping out, but there's nothing I can do about that. Okay, I have to leave up Spell Pierce. I hope he doesn't have days. Okay, he did not. So now I think upkeep I'm going to Tamio. <clears throat> I could also... Or upkeep I'm going to top. I could also Tamio back Tough Cookie, but... Kind of feels like just going upkeep top. Basically get two draws here. Oh, and there's Displacer Kitten. Okay, I don't have the mana for that, but that sounds pretty excellent still. Um, draw Displacer Kitten. There's a Misha's research desk there as well. I do have to worry about Fiery Confluence, but I don't have to worry that much because I've got this crisis here. So let's see. Let's go plus one. I'm just going to name Grist because I know it's there. Yeah. Grist, the Hunger Tide, Milling, a bunch of nonsense, and then I'm going to play Displacer Kitten. Pass the turn here. And not really sure what he's uh, doing. Nope. All right. Got game two. Okay. Going to game three. Uh, yeah, I don't think it just didn't make me want Thieving Skydiver or Cast in the Fire or anything like that. I guess I could put in like Bone Crusher. He's got some small creatures. Definitely like the Malevolent Hermit. I mean, it feels like if I just draw a Retrofitter, I'm going to be in pretty good shape. All right. Let's go. I've had a Mox my opening hand each time. Let's see if we can continue that trend. 
No mocks, but this hand is very good, so I will keep. And if I draw Soul Ring, oof, all bets are off. Okay. Turn one, Gilded Goose. Your turn. I'll even get to make food with a tough cookie. Oh, Swords the Gilded Goose. Jeez, that's aggressive. Okay. Mox, 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 mox. Oh, ho, ho, there's the Soul Ring. All right. Soul Ring. Tough cookie. Retrofitter. Your turn. Tough cookie looking great here. Guy's Cradle would be great. Honestly, a land is just fine. Like, I probably win if I draw a land. I just need to keep up Spell Pierce. Because if I draw a land, I can play the One Ring and keep up Spell Pierce for... Uh, Fracture Identity, which is like the main thing I'm concerned about. If I don't draw a land, I kind of feel like I just Retrofitter, but it will depend on what spell I draw. If I draw like an Ignoble, I'll just go Ignoble, attack for three, use Retrofitter, that sort of thing. It also depends. If he doesn't play a land here, which he led on Vantage Plane, so he might not have more lands. And let's see... Nathan's tank in here. I mean, he might not have just played his land. He just is deciding which land to play. But we'll see. He might have a way to kill something. And I mean, if you could kill something, you'd kill Soul Ring. So I guess if he has Embereth Shieldbreaker this turn, <clears throat> that would be pretty annoying. But if he does, he does. And I'll, I'll regroup from there. We'll see. Land. Oh, no. Does he have Fiery Confluence? Oh, he has Dac. Steal the tough cookie. Okay, didn't steal the soul ring. Okay, I guess I like that. Mm. Now I think I am just going to one ring and then hope to draw an island here. Let's go island. No, that wasn't a land. If he has fracture identity here, things get rough. But if he doesn't, I'm in great shape. Dak is really good against me, I will say that. He has Dak and Embereth Shieldbreaker. Dak is a lot scarier. Not drawing a land there was a, was a beating. Because when I have one ring, if the one ring lives, I'm going to draw a land. I'm going to never miss another land drop. Also, just like, if the one ring doesn't live, I would, uh, drawing a land would have been nice too. So, let's see. Let's see what Dak finds here. All right, discarding... Rodus, Firebrand, and Shatter Skull Smashing. I mean, those aren't, like, that good, so... I guess my Soul Ring's going to get blown up here. Oh, we're cycling Oliphant. Maybe not. If Soul Ring lives through this turn, I feel pretty good about things. But I don't know how likely that is. In fact, I would imagine it's not that likely. Oh, Flicker Wisp. Flicker the Plains to keep up No More Lies? Okay, okay, we got... We got a game here. I mean, there's a DAC. The DAC in play is not ideal. Okay, let's draw. Okay, Bolt. Oh, and Spire Bluff for untapped land. Ruby. And I don't want to play Sahili here because I want to play Malevolent Hermit first to protect myself against things. If he's going to no more lies it, then I guess I'll allow that. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I guess, yeah, I can't, yeah, I have to do this now. Bolt the deck now. So he could use No More Lies. So here's the question. Does he use No More Lies in order to make me burn Hermit Activation? Or actually, I would just pay. If he does, then he might have Fractured. But if he doesn't do that, then... Then I know he's got No More Lies in hand, which isn't a big concern for me. And I get to uh, just make a Retrofitter token, I think, is what I'll do. All right, I actually feel pretty good about this now. The Flicker Wisp was not the end of the world, and drawing Lightning Bolt was was massive. Okay. Well, in that case, I'll pay. All right. Well, 
Looks like he's going to get to land fractured if he's got it. And then, let's see. If he doesn't have fractured, though, I, I really like my spot. Teferi Time Raveler? Sure. Bounce my Hermit. Attack me down to 14. Then I go to 12 off the ring. I have a bunch of food tokens in play, though. All right, now I feel, I feel like we're doing fine. Mother of Runes. I don't really care too much about that either. Okay. We should be pretty much smooth sailing from here, is my guess. It's his last card. Oh, we got to make sure he can make Tough Cookie do some things there. All right, let's just draw. If I find Urza, well, I would have rather found Urza, but Cradle's also pretty good. Sahili, Research Desk, make a token. I might not play Cradle this turn, though. I'm at 12. I kind of want to get a Hermit in play. Mm, make a servo. So I can make a flyer off of that servo, which is pretty nice. So I want to leave the mana up for that. So the question now is, do I play Hermit or not? I think I don't. I think I want to leave up Spell Pierce. So I think I just play Island and then pass, and then I can make a flyer to block the Flicker Wisp. I threaten to make two things and crack a food. Oh, I can't leave up Spell Pierce because of Teferi. Oh. Um, do I just play the Hermit then? I think so. And... Do I leave up blue mana or not? I don't, I think I do. I think I'm just gonna play Hermit, because I could have played Cradle, but I don't think the extra mana matters that much for me. So I think I'd rather just keep, give myself the most odds here. I could also minus two Sahili to kill Teferi, but I don't have very much that Teferi stops, just the Spell Pierce. So I'd rather do this. I think I'm just gonna give him one more turn to play Fractured, I guess. Okay, he's playing something pre-combat. Oh, is he going to Lotus Petal? Oh, this is fine. Yep, make that a four. You can give it Pro Blue if he wants. Okay, sack a Servo. Make a 1-1 one, one Flyer. So if he wants to Pro Blue, he could. Both attacking me. I think I just block, block. Oh no, I guess it's, he's just going to use Mother of Rune, so I'll just chump. You can't use Mother of Runes to save the Thopter. I take two down to ten. Teferi gets to tick up. I take three down to seven. He played a Meticulous Archive and milled a card. Great. Okay, now I think we're... Now, now I think we're good. <laughs> All right, let's draw with the One Ring here. Tamiyo and Manly kind of missed here. But I still think I have some decent outs. I'm at seven. I don't really want the one ring anymore. What I could do is I turn a food into the one ring, keep the, the, the food. And then I have, I have so much gas going on here. So I'm going to turn food into the one ring. Choose this one ring to keep. Draw a card off this one ring as well. Urza like kind of ends the game. Still nothing, huh? Um, Sack the research desk. Ignoble hire tireless tracker. Um, I guess I'd rather tracker. I was hoping for something to trigger Sahili. Wow, this is kind of wild. Okay, yeah. No, I gotta get. I gotta take the tracker here. And then I haven't played a land yet. So let's go. Tireless tracker. I could flash back Malevolent Hermit. I guess I do that. And then play Cradle. And get a clue and then pass the turn. All right, I drew really badly off that turn, but I feel like I'm in pretty good shape. Also, one thing that's nice is I don't have a... Um, 
One ring in play. So fracture identity is not as bad as it would have been in prior turns. He can fracture retrofitter, and that is annoying, but it would definitely not be the end of the world. You draw a good one. I'm at seven. I think I just go to five if the tough cookie attacks me. I don't really need to. Oh, no, I can block with the tireless tracker and crack the clue. Yeah, that's probably good enough. Could give the tough cookie pro green an attack main, in which case I'd probably take it, though. Because, yeah, even if he has fiery confluence. No, I would just block. If he gives it pro green an attack, I'd block with benevolent geist. All right. I don't want to. He has an instant speed, fiery confluence up. I, I got to respect that. Okay, block. Mm. I mean, I guess I just cracked the clue to draw a card, I think. Because I'm about to lose a creature here, so. <clears throat> I don't want my cradle turning off. Plus to fairy. Well, now I'm going to get to attack the Teferi. Oh, and I drew Kitten. Okay. Let's attack Teferi first and see what's up there. Okay, if Teferi's gone, then I have all my counters up. All right, so let's go Displacer Kitten. And make a clue. Cameo, Displacer, Clinton, Blink, Soul Ring. And now I get to play a bunch of cards out of my graveyard. Because <laughs> I can go Tamio, minus, I have 12 cards in deck, minus three, get back Research Desk, Blink, Kitten. Okay, Whew. we got it. All right, this is going to be a big match for the outcome of this draft. Because Salvato's their Lotus Mox Mox Bowmasters player, and I'm their Mox Mox, and I'm our Mox Mox Soaring, you know, Urza player. I'm on the play. That's the start. He's also got Luchi Companion. But all right, let's go. Let's go Soaring. Um, no, but I don't really think I can mulligan this hand. We're not. We're not to the point where like mulling into a mox is so busted that I've got to mull a very serviceable hand here. Let's just top and pass. Okay. Tap land, no bow masters. <laughs> or no moxes, rather. It's also got Lotus. Don't love that my opening seven has no, has no power because I know that he's got pretty likely to have one in his opening hand. Is he just going to discard turn one against my mana leak? Okay. I guess we'll see how this goes. He probably has a mox then. He's going to go like land, mox, reanimate. I mean, if he doesn't play it, I'll just spin top end of turn. That's fine with me. All right, now shell dock aisle. Sure. Shield Dock's good. I don't have a way to remove it, and he's got some powerful stuff in his deck. No play? All right. Spin top. Let's get some action here. Forest, Grist, Tamir. All right, well, at least I found the forest. The forest is like the big one. Play Noble, pass. I mean... He's going to play around Mana Leak now, but he discarded on turn one, or like he just didn't play a land on turn one. The discard's not actually a downside because he wants the, the card in the graveyard. What I'm worried about is he goes Lotus and then plays a reanimation spell, spell through Mana Leak. But if he has it, he has it. I can't I can't do anything about it. So Grist, Tamio are my top two cards. Yeah, you got Lotus. What am I going to do? No plays. Okay. Okay. I guess I'll play Gilded Goose. Is he gonna like necromancy it on upkeep? Yeah, he's drawn a bunch of things. This is a weird draft, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. 
Come on, Salvato. What's going on? All right. Draw a Gilded Goose. Play it. I think I'm going to play Retrofitter also. I don't get to spin the top, but that's not worth tons to me. I could also play Misha's Research Desk. Oh, that's actually probably better. The only reason I'm hesitant is if he reanimates the Archon, I would like to discard Misha's Research Desk rather than discard Retrofitter. Yeah, so I kind of want to just play the Retrofitter here. There's so many cards he could have that really, really get me, but that's fine. If he has Bowmasters, I mean, if he has Reanimates, like, <laughs> he could have just cast Archon in a few turns here, especially if he didn't not play a land on turn one. Presumably he's going to do something here, right? He didn't even put Lutri into hand. Corpse Dance. Yeah. Not beating that. All right. Well, Soul Guide's good. I don't think Misdirection is really what I want. Bone Crusher can stop. Bowmasters. I think having another answer to Bowmasters is nice. Definitely want Thieving Skydiver. Tamio is kind of nice. It stops the Archon from making you sacrifice or discard. Displacer Kitten's a little tough. Spell Pierce, I think, is still good. Gris Sahili, maybe, like maybe Tireless Tracker goes out. I can see doing that. I mean, it's a good Tireless Tracker deck, but I just have to take something, I think, on the expensive side out. So, or actually, I'm going to take Ignoble out. See if that makes that in. Okay, good. Uh, he's got Orcish Bow Masters, and that's the only card that j it just owns. Like, killing the Skydivers, whatever, but killing Ignoble is just such a beating. There's no reason to let myself do that. Though I also don't think he can actually punish Siege of the Synod, so I think I'm going to put that in my deck too. All right. I guess I like where we're at here, but it's going to be a tough one. All right. Game two. Let's see if I can draw some power this time. Look, in the Battle of Power vs. Power, you drew a Mox and a Lotus. I didn't draw any of it, and that, that is going to make things a little harder. I could have mulliganed that hand, but, I mean, honestly, that hand with Mana Leak was still a higher chance to win than most. All right, I will keep this. I, I don't have any blue mana. Don't love that. But turn two Grist is pretty nice, and a single blue gets me to Mana Leak, and then the second blue gets me to Urza, which is one of the better cards in my deck, though obviously... Uh, we're not too close to casting it here, so we can uh, draw something that'll turn the tide there. I guess just drawing islands is good. I wouldn't I wouldn't mind if my top two cards were both just island, but well, my top card's island, and then something bad that I want to mill like a forest, and then another island. That would be good. All right, let's go Bayou and Mox. He mulled the six here against black. You got to play your Moxes out so you don't get discard renoed. Okay, Thundering Falls. Don't surveil Archon. <laughs> oh, we surveilled a Grave Titan. How lucky. All right, let's go. Island? Oh, even better. All right, Botanical Sanctum. I'm going to play Grist. I can't leave man up here. But now I've got a nice solution to uh, the first creature. Oh, I milled the One Ring? I wanted to draw the One Ring. That would have been the best draw I could imagine. Brutal. Fatal push my token. Oh, is he going to Corpse Dance the Grave Titan? Uh, all right. Oh, Thief of Sanity. No, that's... F oh, he wants to save the Thief. Oh, this works out nicely. Because now I get to go... I still get to Grist. And then I'm going to go land... Chain Lightning the Thief. I could have uh, played Urza and sacked the Construct to Grist, but I think this is better because I also have Mana Leak up for his next play. And then next turn I can play Urza and I'll have uh, Mana Leak up even after the Urza. That's my plan at least. Is he going to upkeep kill the Grist? If he does, I'll just allow it. Urza is enough to win me the game. And then I can just play land and have Urza up. Oh. Soul Guide Lantern. Let's go ahead and attack with the Insect Token first. First things first. Send for one. All right. I got in for one. Plus one Grist. 
Keep them in good cards. Uh, Soul Guide Lantern. See if this resolves. If it does, I'm eating that Grave Titan. Get out of here, Grave Titan. And then Urza. Okay. Now he's going to kill the Urza. All right, well, I can't do anything about that because I don't have the mana to mana leak. But this is fine. I still have a 3-3 and two 1-1s and a Grist. He doesn't have anything in the graveyard to reanimate. And then if I untap, I'll get to have leak up. That'll work pretty nicely. Lotus <laughs> Archon. Okay, put Lutri in hand and then plays a Mox. So now he has Lutri up. Sure. Let's just draw a little bit of action here. Yeah. Not quite. Uh, plus one. Okay, at least I didn't mill any action. Soaring is is good though, because it makes my construct into a 4-4, four four, which means I can attack past the loot tree. And I'm not gonna attack with the tokens because of the loot tree. He's probably not going to play the Lutri end of turn unless he has like a particular reason to do so. The good thing is the Mana Leak might be able to snipe his Lutri setup if he does if he does do some sort of Lutrying. Lazav, I'll just kill that with Grist. That's there's no issue. And I'm gonna leave the Soul Guide here. I don't really need it, and I want to to I don't need to use it. And uh I would like to keep my construct a 4-4. Okay, kill your Lazav. Attack with my Construct. If he wants to play Lutri, I can double block Lutri with the Insects. And that works out fine for me too. And I also have Spell Pierce up now, though. The Spell Pierce is a lot less enticing, but you know what? It's not that bad. Also, it's possible that Mana Leak plus Spell Pierce combine to counter something. Yeah, if he just runs out Lutri, I'm, I'm not responding. That is fine. Bowmasters would still be kind of annoying. Because that card's always good. I kind of want to save Mana Leak for a hardcast Archon now. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't call that action. Let's attack with the Construct. I have one creature in my graveyard, so Grist's plus one is not looking... Or minus five, rather, is not looking too relevant. Okay. Mill. Sensei's top. I need to stop milling. <laughs> I've milled Sensei's. I've milled a land, but I also milled one ring uh, Sahelian Sensei's top. So, not an ideal setup. Okay, he has eight mana and is not playing Archon. So, that, that's a pretty big game. I'm really crisis is nice and I think I'm just gonna attack with everything because if he goes Lutri and block one of the insects he takes six going down to one and then I can just minus five grist to deal one to him <laughs> and uh, I think that's fine yeah you got your Lutri he's actually got to chump the construct here yep he does Goes to four. I'm just gonna plus one grist again. And I don't even think I play the crisis because I want to have leak plus pierce up. And I have lethal creatures in play, so it really doesn't seem like it it gets me anything. He also might play a reanimate this turn to try to get me to crack soul guide and lose my construct token. Nope, he did not. Alright, if he plays Lotus, I'm spell piercing it for sure. Because then I could still mana leak the Archon. Mirror Battle Ball. Nope. Mana leak you. And we are going to game three here in, I would assume, moments. <laughs> I will attack you with everything. That, that'll, that would be enough. And that would be enough. All right. So going to game three. Nah, I don't think Misdirection's good enough. I don't think Malevolent Hermit is either. 
Rexage doesn't stop a lot of the stuff he's doing though. I guess he's got two moxes. It's always gonna be fine there. Um maybe I don't want bone. No, he has Thief and Boom Masters. Yeah. Alright. I like what I got here. Alright, game three. Oh, big match here. Let's go double mox soaring. I'm just gonna ask for it all. We're, I'm playing on someone who's got three pieces of power. How lucky. I should just ask for all my power. Alright, let's go, Salvato. Select your loot tree. Well, here we go. Obviously, I'm going to keep this one and lead on Spire Bluff Soul Ring. <laughs> see if Salvato's mulling. Also, if I draw a Mox here and have turn one Cryptic Coat, turn two Unruly Crasis. All right, I'll keep Salvato mold. Okay, okay, okay. Mac is 0-2 right now, so me and, and Tom's 0-1, so we don't have a lot of losses to give. But I think Tom's going to win round two, and I'm going to win this game. So I'm going to draw Mox Emerald. That's my top card. I'm manifesting it. Or he's going to, he's going to, oh no, he can't discard turn one. He's on the play. I was going to say, and he's mulligan. So there's a lot of reasons he can't. But had he gone turn one, discard Archon, and I had drawn Soul Guide, that would have been so funny. Land Soul Guide, pop your Archon. All right, let's go. All right. Salvato mulliganed once, and presumably has something good to play. They spent a bit tanking on it. All right, that's not a Mox or a Lotus, but obviously you could still have both of those things in hand. I'm over here just hoping for a Mox Emerald, you know. That, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, let's go Mox Emerald. Well, Tamio's not great, but get a Soul Ring into play. Turn two, I could Krasis, I could Cloak. I could Cryptic Coat plus cast Preordain, but that doesn't sound as good as just getting an Unruly Krasis into play, I feel like. Krasis is pretty good. Mm. Oh. There's the one ring, but you know what? I think I still just want to get something good into play here. He doesn't have that many ways to kill the Krasis, as far as I can tell. Just play this. If he, plus, if he has Bowmasters, I really don't want to like play Krasis into Bowmasters. Or uh, one ring into Bowmasters, that is. Malcolm, okay. Malcolm's pretty good. Is he going to just slam an Archon here? Well, if he does, I get to play the one ring. That's something. Let's see. Not Archon, please. Or Grave Titan, any of those big scary monsters. That would be ideal. All right. Undercity Sewers. There's the Lotus. What you got? White mana? Oh, into Vicious Battle Rager. Okay. We've got the initiative. Okay, interesting. So I can take it back with Krasis if I want to pump the Krasis. That doesn't seem super exciting. <laughs> now I wish I'd played Cryptic Coat, but uh, let's see. If I make it a 7 7 and attack. He chumps with the Battle Rager or gives me the initiative. Hmm. Let's see what I draw here. What, what do we got? What would, what would I draw that would be super relevant? Lightning Bolt would be really nice. Does he have another play too? Because I guess if he has another play, that, that definitely makes me not want to attack. Oh, he has Dismember too. Okay. Well, Lightning Bolt would be awesome. No, Forest is not very good. Let's go... I kind of want to get a Cryptic Coat into play and then steal Initiative and play the One Ring. That actually sounds pretty good. <clears throat> Let's cast Preard in here. Thieving Skydiver and Mox Emerald. There's my Mox. Um, I mean, the Mox actually still seems fine. It's my guess. 
Do I want Skydiver for anything? I mean, it blocks the, the Malcolm. I could also just, actually, maybe I don't take the Mox. Let's see, I have five mana, next turn I'll have six mana. Yeah, <clears throat> I can play the Skydiver, so I'm gonna put Mox on the bottom, Skydiver on top, and then Cryptic Coat here. And then pass. Yeah, them having Dismember too was kind of a beat. Ship the turn. They get to, so Salvato's gonna get to go put Forge Counters. It's pretty nice to put them on the Battle Rager. That's a pretty effective plan. But one thing that's nice about that for me is that that means that uh, Thieving Skydiver can block the Malcolm. So that's not too bad. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I'm going to go take the initiative. Oh, what did I flip, by the way? Oh, Ravgren Triumph, sure. Well, I guess I'm glad it kind of worked out because I didn't really want to draw Ravgren Triumph. Take five. I'm at 13. Please, no big thing. We're getting pretty close to Shell Lock, too. Oh, I mean, I need Salvato not to have another good play. Oh, that's actually not the end of the world either. All right, so let's go. Send, take the initiative. I think I get a blue here. Yeah, I don't really need another green. I definitely don't need a red. Never have enough blue mana. Okay, and then what? I guess I'll play the blue. Play the one ring. Okay, I no longer can lose the initiative. Draw Mox. Oh, top is actually not terrible either. What, did I, what, did I, what if I go Retrofitter plus top instead of Skydiver? Because I don't need the Skydiver to block this turn. And if I draw, if I can find Gaia's Cradle, like we're really cruising here. Okay. No initiative. Hopefully no good plays. Cycle of land or something. <laughs> oh, putting Lutri in, sure. Pass the turn. Uh, I go to 12. Yeah, I'm definitely going to forge here. Forge on this unblockable Raugrin Trium. All right, let's get a bolt here. No, I need a bolt. Um... I think I just draw. I don't think I'm gonna. He, he's, if he's got Bowmaster, he's got Bowmaster. And he did not. I didn't draw really much of anything. So I'm like one point short here. But if I block Malcolm and Battle Rager, I take 10 going to 2. So that's not too bad. Mm, or sorry, block Thief of Sanity, take Battle Rager and Malcolm. <laughs> uh. But that leaves me with five mana left over. So I could Tamio, or I could Retrofitter. Let's see, if I play Skydivers, then I can go Retrofitter, make a token. I can't do anything else with it, though. I kind of think I look with top. Let's just make sure. What is Tamio doing here? If I cast Tamio, it doesn't really do anything. Next turn, I just win off of uh, hitting for, for eight. So I just have to survive this turn. Can make with retro I can so I guess I want to leave up spell pierce and play skydiver so I don't think it hurts to look with the top looking for um, lightning bolt yeah lightning bolt's pretty good thieving skydiver Stern Scolding, okay. Nice last card, but I had the Spell Pierce. And then, let's just do this now, I think. Bolt the Thief of Sanity. And then play a land and have Retrofitter up. Not that it really does much because I can't block. All right. 
so Vado has a removal spell I lose. He doesn't get to shell dock here. And even if he takes the initiative, I take eight. All right. Block Malcolm. I go to nine. Then I go to four off trap. And then I go to two off one ring. And that's game. Oh, no big deal. Two and oh. All right, playing against Jesse round three here. He's on white weenie. I'm going to keep this hand. I'm on the draw, which is unfortunate, but I have turn one mana leak, turn two crisis, which is a pretty big game. So let's go Spire Bluff, Mox. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to play Tough Cookie. I wasn't going to play uh, Mishra's Research Desk. I'd rather mana leak his two drop, but I think given that I drew Tough Cookie, and it combines so nicely with Krasis. This seems totally fine. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to smack him up a bit here. Land, Krasis, and then next turn, Krasis plus Tough Cookie is a lot of damage. He does have Solitude in his deck. I guess I have to be worried about that. Solitude Ephemerate's a beating. Skyclave on the Krasis. Oh, that's a shame. Draw, all right, well, hoping to hit lands. I kind of want to crack research desk here and hope to draw a land because otherwise it's going to be kind of rough. Oh, Gaia's Cradle. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, I'm going to take the Cradle. I'll play it. And now I'll pass the turn. I'm no longer the beatdown. I'm just keeping, uh, I'm not playing Retrofitter because I want to keep up Mana Leak. If I play something I can Spell Pierce here, it would be kind of annoying. Uh, well, I still will. It's still just too good to use Spell Pierce against uh, White Weenie here. He gets to hit me for three. Then I get to start Retrofitter Cradling. All right, that's a pretty big game. Mm. Let's see. Yeah, why don't I just slam the one ring here? Draw, land. Ugh. All right, I'm gonna attack. I don't, I don't, I don't care. If he wants to trade and give me a three-three, that works for me. All right, no land, but I actually still think I'm in pretty great shape here. I don't want him to slam parallax wave. Adeline, yeah, Adeline's good, but not the end of the world. Okay. All right, take one down to 13. Oh, Gilded Goose is actually really nice here. Land? Okay, I can't play the Sanctum unless I don't want it untapped. How much do I care about that? I don't know. Let's see, what is my mana? I guess I actually can. No, I'm, I'm going to want to play the Forest because I, I can. Yeah, I can just get, leave up Mana Leak here, or I can make a Retrofitter creature. I can also, uh, depending on, is this the Parallax Wave? Yeah, so we're going to we're gonna Mana Leak that. Mm -hmm. And then we still, I can still make a Retrofitter creature. Okay, and then now next turn, I'm going to go pretty nuts here. Um... It's a 5-4 Adeline. Let's see. I just don't want to lose any creatures, so I'm just going to go block, block, chump, take three. And I don't want to take damage because I have the one ring. But next turn, next turn I feel like I'm going to really be able to pop off here. All right. So I go to eight. But now I draw three. Urza. Oh, kitten. Ooh, kitten. Um, so I can play Retrofitter, or I can make a token with Retrofitter, play Kitten, play Top Flicker One Ring. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. And then Preordain. So let's make a 1-1. One, one. I think it's worth it. And part of the reason I don't want to play the Botanical Sanctum too is I figured I would be able to find things to play. And then let's go... Sensei's top. 
Do I want to flicker one ring or retrofitter? I guess I'll flicker the one ring. And then I have two mana left over, four blockers. I guess I'll draw with the one ring. And now I can preordain and I think still flicker the one ring here. All right. Oh, lightning bolt is perfect. Bottom, top. <clears throat> and now I can bolt the Skyclave now. I really don't want him to ephemerate. So let's go ahead and sack this for red. I'm gonna bolt the Skyclave. Am I gonna flicker one ring first? Or I think I might flicker Gilded Goose. And then Kitten the Gilded Goose. I don't really need to draw a card off the one ring that much. I, next turn I'm gonna win really easily. So let's just make sure I have max blockers here. Pass the turn. Mm -hmm. Hi, Jewel Dog. Staff of the storyteller. Yeah, I'm I'm going pretty broken here. If I get to if I get another turn here, it's just gonna be it's gonna be Jover. Like he gets to attack with Adeline, but yeah, not close. All right, up a game. All right, game two. Ooh, I think we're boarding in some red. Yeah, we are. Um, I don't know about cast into the fire. I do want Rex Sage against Parallax Wave. I'm gonna take out Spell Pierce despite its excellent performance that game. Take out Skydiver. Take out Soul Guide and probably take out a forest for a mountain here. Because I, I had one more green than blue. I don't think he can punish Seat. So basically anyone who doesn't have a way to punish Seat of the Synod with like Fiery Confluence, it's slightly better because it makes like my Urza Construct bigger or I can see Healy turn it into something. Like those aren't irrelevant. I don't think I want Firestorm. That one seems like a little bit too much for me. All right. I got a lot of burn in my deck, this post board here. I feel like this matchup's pretty good, partially because I have three pieces of power and Jesse has none, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll keep this hand. I don't have a second blue and I have kind of too many lands, but you know, these are all solvable problems. All right, there's my second blue and let's find a Mox or a Soul Ring, please. No, but a Grist turn two is acceptable, all right. And let's see what he's got. Talisman. All right. That's acceptable. Bayou. Mox. Oh, and then I do a top, too. Top was a nice little draw. Grist the Hunger Tide. And plus one. And Mill of Land. Oh, not quite. Mill to Bone Crusher, but that's okay. And then I get to go Island, Urza. He does have a window to resolve Parallax Wave. Oh, Palace Jailer. All right. I mean, that, that's pretty good. But I feel like I'm doing okay here. We'll have to see, I guess. Oh, I guess Spire Bluff the land I want to play here. Urza. Hmm. I'll play Sensei's top, because I'm not going to block with the Construct, most likely. And plus one. Oh, actually, it worked out because I milled an island, but I actually should have spun the top with by tapping the top to Urza before doing that. It would just give me a much better... Like, I would get to mill the card I least wanted of the three, but because I milled an island, which I know I don't want, this actually worked out a little bit better. All right. I mean, this is going to be a close game. Like, obviously, if I find something good in the top three, then this hand, like, I have an Urza in play, so I'll be able to do much more busted things. But he is drawing two cards a turn. If he just goes, like, Skyclave your Urza, or if he has a Ephemerate or something, like, Solitude, Ephemerate, Skyclave, he has a lot of ways to kill Urza. If he Parallax Wave, he's just a really good white deck. If he doesn't have one of those cards, then... I feel like I'm in pretty good shape, but that's a lot of cards I just named. All right. Oh, no. This is like, this looks like an ephemerate to me. Yeah, I was going to go pretty hard here. Uh, 
I'm drawing the top, or I'm not drawing the top, but I could draw the top. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, you got my Urza and my Construct, I assume. Oh, it's even Ephemerate, not touch the Spirit Realm. Well, it's not going to be easy. I don't lose Grist. And lingering souls. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I guess I'll draw. Draw. Sahili plus Grist mill that forest. Badlands. Sensei's top. Make a 4 4. I guess I'll attack. It's, it's just going to get. Ephemerate Solitude anyway, so I'll, I'll force a chump. Unless he wants to give me uh, the Monarch for a turn. I would take that. <laughs> you can't flashback the Lingering Souls. There's that at least. But my top card's a tough cookie. Really? All right, I'll just draw the tough cookie. That's fine. I don't mind drawing that card. And then now he's going to get to kill all my planeswalkers and all my creatures. But aside from that, <laughs> yeah, Palace Jailer. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm at 21 still. I guess he doesn't get to kill all my planeswalkers unless he draws, unless he drew a parallax wave or something. Adeline, Adeline's pretty good too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are all attacking Sahili. So what's happening? No, these two are attacking Grist, and it's going to die. And then this is going to attack Sahili. Uh, let's look at my top three. The One Ring's kind of nice. Yeah, I mean, sure. Um, I'm definitely going to block something. I'm just, I think it's got to be double block. He has touched the Spirit Realm in his deck. It's got to be double block this. And then he sacks Benevolent Bodyguard. And then... I mean, I guess that's fine. I don't really have a better... I, I've got to use the Bodyguard up at some point. All right. And... Sahili so takes less damage. Oh, nice. Okay, so we're just trading off. Pass the turn, hopefully. And then next turn, I'm going to draw the one ring. I don't need to use the top Sahili thing. Because I'm just drawing the one ring. I'm at 21. I mean, I have a lot of lives, so... It's not, it's not over yet. It's not looking good. I will say that, but it's not over yet. And then I'm going to play Tough Cookie. Top card's Tireless Tracker here. <sighs> Do I want to use Sahili to turn anything into anything? Uh, it's at two. Currently, Sahili is going to die. I block, block. Yeah, but it makes it a little easy on him if, it, if I do it that way. So let's just not. Let's just pass. Basically, he gets to hit Sahili for two in the air, guaranteed. But in order to get the last two in, he's going to have to ascend in some of his other creatures, which could give me an opening here, because then I could maybe attack back. I'm drawing Tireless Tracker with the one ring here. Sadly, Urza's gone. Urza's like the card that would really bust this game open with just the Sahili. The Sahili's probably going to die here. I mean... If he attacks with everything, well, I guess we'll just have to see how it goes. But Gaia's Cradle is maybe another card that could do something pretty big. I don't know. It's going to be a close game either way. He's got to... If he, if he plays another good spell, I'm just dead. Like, I needed him to not play the Adeline already. And if he plays, like, Touch the Spirit Realm or Parallax Wave, like, I am just, just out of here. This is gone for good off Solitude. 
No, no, par no palace jailer bringing Urza back. I, I don't get the get out of jail free card here. And so, what is it attacks? Two spirits. It's a Healy. Can't attack me for, for, with anything, of course, because the one ring. And then Adeline at Sahili. But then, if you want to kill Sahili, you have to send in Palace Jailer too. And then I can trade Tough Cookie for Palace Jailer. But I guess it just trades for Bodyguard. Though I don't even know which one's better right now. I might, I might just let. At that point, I just let Sahili die. Tough Cookie eats one of the human tokens, and next turn, Tough Cookie Baby sends my food or something at them. Them being, well, slacks. <laughs> we'll see. All right, going to combat here. Yep, Adeline and Sahili token. Yeah, this is the attack I expected. And because I can't save Sahili, because this is going at Sahili also, I think I'm just gonna eat a token and not bother blocking otherwise. Okay. All right, I mean, I'm doing something. The One Ring has been astounding here. <laughs> uh, I needed him to not have one thing, and he had one thing. All right, uh, let's get the One Ring in. Draw. Pretty dead now. Let's just draw and then spin top, I think. I just don't have the mana to spend on a bunch of other stuff. Pyrokinesis, pretty good except Benevolent Bodyguard. Well, let's go Tireless Tracker. I mean, I'm in still a lot of lives. Twenty-one, and then Tough Cookie, my food token, and. I'll send in the food. Something either has to block it or I get the monarch for a turn here. <laughs> Top card's pyrokinesis and there's like mana leak and ignoble. Block up benevolent bodyguard. You don't need it. Or don't block and I draw pyrokinesis. That's also fine, which at some point I can hard cast to probably pretty good effect. Okay. Sadly, nothing comes back from Palace Jailer because it was all tokens. Okay, I mean, maybe if he's got nothing here. Hmm. Snapping something off. That doesn't sound like nothing. A glimmer lens. Okay. So now he gets to glimmer lens and equip onto a flyer, I guess. Mm -hmm. Onto Adeline. Okay. Probably going to chump Adeline here. And then eat the 1-1 one, one token. Touch the Spirit Realm and Ephemerator both gone. And I'm not in a universe where I can beat Parallax Wave. So I think I'm not going to block the Palace Jailer. I do have to block the Adeline. It just deals too much damage. Mm. Servo on Adeline. Tough Cookie on token. Yeah, I'll take four. Okay, you become the monarch again, sure. So I'm drawing mana leak. Uh, I guess that's fine. Or ignoble. Oops, I thought it was mana leak. This is probably better, to be honest. Um, Meyer. Crack it. Mountain, not in the business of non untapped lands here. Ooh, Rex Age to get the ring back would be nice at some point. Let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana. I kind of just want to pass the turn here and cast Pyrokinesis plus use a, a clue. I feel like I don't need to do anything. I mean, obviously, like, there's a lot that he could have here that's pretty annoying, but Mana Leak is actually not even going to be that good when he's got this much mana out. Okay. 
So he does get to draw another card here. That's not ideal. He doesn't get to draw another card even at the end of his turn as well. Is it Skyclave time? Could be. The Lingering Souls tokens have done a lot of work here. <laughs> Let's see. March on the Tough Cookie. Two, three. Man, I don't get to use Pyrokinesis. All right, well. It's okay, I'll cast Pyrokinesis next turn. I need to make a blocker here. And I don't even think I sack this to gain life. I'm losing the, the card battle here, not... Not so much anything else, so. Can't attack with Adeline anymore. Tough Cookie was good this game. It's been good this draft. When you're base green and artifacts, or like heavy green and artifacts, then that is pretty good still. Mm. Oh, really? Adeline getting in. Mm -hmm. No, you can't get in. All right. Spirits, that's fine. I'm I'll let the I'll get spirited away here. I'm at 14. And then we're gonna do some clue cracking here. Donto Vanguard, sure. Alright, so I have one, two, three, four, five mana. So I think I crack clue. The question is, do I spin the top after cracking the clue? Tamiyo is interesting. All right. Let's crack another clue, because I actually don't mind drawing a land here. All right, hold on. Let's wait for the <laughs> card draw to resolve. And Chain Lightning is not too bad. It's also something I can pitch to Pyrokinesis if need be. Displacer Kitten. What does Displacer Kitten do for me? Mm, doesn't do a lot. Yeah, it doesn't do anything right now. Maybe the crisis is a little better. Um, what am I doing next turn? I guess I could play Retrofitter. Play Displacer Kitten. Yeah, actually, I kind of like getting Displacer Kitten into play. So, because I have a instant speed pyrokinesis as well. Draw. So I can play Displacer Kitten and Tamio. So Displacer Kitten. Tamio. And Well, I actually almost don't have enough to play Tamiyo. <laughs> well, I guess that's not true. Um, then we'll, we'll blink the mocks. Draw. And then now, what do I want to get back? I could get back Bone Crusher, but I don't have the mana to play it. Though, actually, that's not entirely true. I could get back Bone Crusher, then Pyrokinesis lets me play it at instant speed. All right, so let's do that. Let's pass the turn. And Bone Crusher also makes Benevolent Bodyguard not work quite as well. All right, this is a sick game. I think I've got a shot of winning this one. He needs to have basically nothing else, but we've got we've got some good stuff going here. Or a miracle triumph. Okay, that's actually fine. <laughs> Let's see. So it's kind of on him to see what how how all this attack happens. But I don't think he I don't think he's going to be ready for 
<laughs> pyrokinesis bone crusher here and the, the bone crusher also triggers the kitten which means i get to either flicker tamio to keep it safe or flicker the kitten to keep it safe after blocking all right it looks like i'm representing lightning bolt but that is in fact not what's happening let's see caracas to protect adeline sure Hmm. Attacking Tamio, attacking me. Okay. Yeah, that triggers. You can attack whoever. And then draw. Okay, so those two are attacking Tamio, and then the rest is oh, then the tokens attacking Tamio, and these two, okay, two tokens are attacking Tamio, and then the rest are attacking me. Okay, so I want to keep I want to keep Tamio alive, so I'm gonna need to at least use one of the flickers on Tamio. So I think I'm gonna put tireless tracker, or I actually don't need to flicker Tamio. I can, or I can go, yeah, pyrokinesis here. So that means I get an extra block even if I want. <laughs> oh, so it's targeting Adeline. Um, sure. That's fine. Pro green. All right. So let's go. Kitten. Tireless tracker blocks. <clears throat> Adanto Vanguard. Pass. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. Tap for red. Pyrokinesis. One, two, three, four. Exile Chain Lightning. Kitten Blink Mox. Bone Crusher, that, the token, Kitten Blink Kitten. All right. <clears throat> okay, okay. And I eat the Vanguard too, all right. And then now I get to start doing some Displacer Kitten stuff. All right. Staff draws, that's fine. Just don't kill my Displacer Kitten, por favor. No uh, Skyclave here. And top, Tamio, we get to, we get to do some stuff here. We'll see what he does. All right, and unfortunately, I ran into a hard stop, so I gotta run in Martellus to take over, but you know what, I think he'll close it out. All right, sorry about missing the last turn there. Uh, you know, a as compelling as a reason as it is, uh, daycare is not very understanding if you tell them you're late because you're cube drafting. Um, but we all know what's most important. In any case, let me just tell you what happened. After that devastating pyrokinesis, where I was able to blink and save Displacer Kitten and cast Bone Crusher, Jesse didn't do anything, passed, and the combination of Sensei's Divining Top plus Tamio plus Displacer Kitten basically meant that uh, Martel was able to draw, tap top, draw, play top, blink Tamio, and just basically blink Tamio and uh, ca just cast Lightning Bolt a bunch of times to win the game. So this deck ended up 3 0 and we won the draft by a hair's breadth. Uh, Martel 2 one and I 3 0 So, uh, <clears throat> well, I will say that I, uh, you know, I put these three pieces of power to good use. It's very lucky, of course. The high end is three pieces of power. Uh, and it was such a weird draft where Martel and Salvato just kept opening double power, triple power packs. But you know what? 
I take it. I was the beneficiary, and I at least uh, didn't let it go to waste. This deck was pretty sweet. Had some pretty cool stuff going on, like Tough Cookie, Unruly Krasis, the whole kitten combo thing. Obviously, having Urza and the One Ring was pretty nice, and then just good acceleration plus a couple bolts. So the deck played out nicely. We won, and that uh, last game against Jesse was epic. So uh, really sweet draft, and uh, at the end of the day, <clears throat> you know what? You get three power, you get to, to, to get into a stable pattern here of casting that power early and winning the game. Well, I appreciate you hanging out. Again, sorry that last round got cut off briefly, but really you didn't miss much. Just a bunch of uh, Lightning Bolt t <laughs> Displacer Kitten Tamiyo loops. And uh, you know what? I'll be back tomorrow with another draft, and I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel, and you won't miss a single draft.